let's shift focus a little bit to the Vancouver Canucks and Trevor Linden. Explain that to me. Yeah, thanks. Uh, <laughs> no one has a real answer yet, Jeff. I'm here to tell you, I've, I've read up this morning on the people whose opinions I, I really trust uh, out of Vancouver, and certainly Ian McIntyre, uh, mm-hmm. who's, they don't get any better than that. Um, he smells a bit of a rat here, I can tell. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, there's really no plausible reason why it happens now, why it happens without a press conference. You know, Trevor Linden, we just talked about Wendell Clark in, in Toronto. I mean, Trevor Linden's Dougie Gilmore. Trevor Linden's Wendell Clark. Trevor Linden is, you know, Bob Gainey in Montreal, right? Mm-hmm. He is the beloved, and most people know this, but if you don't, he is the beloved Vancouver Canuck Mm -hmm. in that city. And for him to abruptly be announced to parting ways with the organization uh, without even a press conference, there's something going on. We're only on the first chapter of this book, Jeff. What, uh, well, I mean, we talk about legacies. You know, I'm reading Ian McIntyre's piece. It's pretty you know, when, when you take a look at where that franchise was going when, when, when Trevor took over, and I think how important it was for that fan base to sort of... I'm not always a big fan of having connections to the past. <laughs> for example, the Edmonton Oilers, sometimes you can overdo it. But in this yeah. case, I think it was important to have that, that face. It was important to have the guy that reminded you of the good times and commitment and all that good stuff running things. Because I think it says to your fan base that, okay, we've got somebody who's got your best interest at heart here. You know, what did he accomplish during those, what, uh, four, I guess, four and a third years or whatever it is in, in charge of the Canucks? Are, are they at least in a better position than when he took over? Oh, for sure they are. And, and you know, I am ai think that Jim Benning, the general manager there, I think he gets a bad rap. Uh, I think, I know that, you know, he's not a shiny guy in a suit that you put in a press conference and he, he pulls out all the corporate terms and baffle gabs you to death. He's a pretty straight, solid, down-home hockey man, right? We've all seen Jim on TV. He's, he's a man who, for whom I have very much respect, so I don't want to characterize him negatively. But to me, the reason that Vancouver is where they are, I mean, you know, they got Brock Besser now. they got Bo Horvat. This Elias Peterson kid is coming from Sweden. Uh, he you know, looks like a fabulous player. Thatcher Demko sort of been seasoning in the minors, the goalie. We'll find out about Ole Levy. You know, they, they've, got a, they've got a bunch of guys coming, and I'm going to credit – I have to credit the general manager, Jeff, because, you know, had they screwed up those picks, we blame Mike Gillis for putting them in the hole that the Canucks were in mm-hmm. because they drafted so poorly for about five or six years, dug a crater uh, to, from which the Canucks have trying to, been trying to emerge. So what did Linden do in all that? Linden was sort of the guiding hand. Linden – I think Linden probably was, in my opinion, would have been the the buffer between an impatient ownership right. that always gave me the impression that hey, we got to keep winning. We got, you know, yeah, the Sedin's retiring. Yeah, we haven't drafted for six years. We have to win. We got to make the playoffs. I always thought that Linden was bringing a dose of reality to the organization and and buffering Jim Benning, allowing him to do what a good GM does, fill the cupboards again. And I'll tell you, the cupboards are are looking you know, much closer to full in Vancouver. I don't think they'll be very good in the standings this year, but I think they're absolutely past the nadir of this yeah. rebuild. I like what they're doing. They've been patient. And to me, I'm not inside the office, but I always thought that Trevor paved the way between a, an impatient and sometimes a rational ownership group and a GM that's a real bird dog and allowed it to just sort of percolate. Yeah, so now... You know, boy, not it, it, you almost think if you're Jim Benning, you, you like to have that guy who's got your back a little bit. Um, oh you, know, you say, especially if you're in nuts and bolts, if you're if you're a scout, if you're a scouting guy and that's your your bread and butter and that's your strength, you, you may not want to have an awful lot of time for office politics. I, what does Jim Benning do now? Is there somebody else in that front office that that that, that <laughs> steps up and, and and maybe doesn't fill Trevor Linden's role, the title? but kind of becomes that buffer or at least becomes Jim Benning's, you know, the soft shoulder. Uh, That's an excellent question. You know, I I don't, there is no, I'll tell you, there's no uh, shadow man for Trevor Linden. Trevor Linden is an imposing, important, well-respected 
figure in the city that you can't just come up with another guy and say, okay, you be Trevor Linden now, <laughs> right? That ain't, that's not happening. So, you know, uh, to me, we're going to find a lot about where the, what the Canucks are doing here. Um, again, patient rebuild, done all the right things. The evidence is there that Jim Benning has indeed drafted wisely. Okay, so maybe Oleo Levy's not, you know, the guy we thought he was. Maybe you should have taken Sergeyev, but big picture, he's really stocked the cupboard. If this isn't good enough for the Aquilinis, who own the team, if, if quietly they've been saying we need it to be faster, we need it to happen quicker, if that's what they think, we're going to find that out now. I think that Trevor Linden has probably suppressed some impatience. Right. And no, I don't think there's anyone that can protect um, Jim Benning from that at this point. And I don't think, you know, Jim's a big boy and a good GM. Uh, I'll be interested to see sort of how he, if he gets more of the reins now, or if the ownership takes on a little more active control. Oh, Generally speaking, that's not you good. name the sport, Jeff. You it's name the sport, good. man. That's usually not good. Uh, you know, and I wonder, it, you know, the, as you're talking about this, I just wonder, you know, you can just picture the Aquilini family sitting there watching the Vegas Golden Knights go to the Stanley Cup final and going, <laughs> wait a minute. What the heck? What the heck? I Rebuild? Yeah, there's probably like 25 owners. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, there's a lot of that going on, but I can can especially imagine it. I can especially imagine it there. Speck, thanks so much for doing this, man. Congratulations on the the golf tournament yesterday, and that that was a terrific story. Thanks so much for sharing it with us.